Hey everybody, welcome back to Andy Drink Beer, where I, Andy, drink beer and talk about it. Uh, today, we are doing Great Lakes uh, Dortmunder Gold Lager. Um, so, Great Lakes Beer, uh, it is available in the Twin Cities area, but um, just the lager, uh, but more commonly the porter as well. Um, but I'm joined here today uh, with my friend Eric, uh, and I'm going to throw it over to him for a little bit. Um, Eric, tell us about your drinking experience. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this. Um, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, this is the first time I've tried this particular beer. I haven't had this one yet. Um, generally, I tend more towards IPAs. I don't drink a ton of beer. Uh, ordinarily, I drink more bourbon and scotch. Um, but there's a bunch of really small breweries within I don't know a couple of miles of my house like, like I got one half a mile down the street here um, so there's been a couple of times where I've stumbled my way home from that one but um, you know I, I don't drink a ton of beer ordinarily I, I, I tend to find something that I like and just sort of stick with it um, but because the beer that I tend to drink most often is just locally brewed stuff. Uh, obviously, you didn't have access to that. So we're trying out something new. Going to give it a whirl and sort of see what happens, see if we like it or not. Um, excited to try it. Awesome. Um, well, thanks for being here, um, making time out of your day to talk with us. Um, have you tasted this? I have not yet. I like it. Yeah, it's certainly not bad. I think I did it a bit of a disservice by not letting it be fully cooled the way it should be. Uh, as you know, I had a little bit of trouble finding it. But I managed to get a hold of a six pack tonight and stuck it in my refrigerator a couple of hours ago. So, nice. uh, you know, it's not exactly at the temperature that I would ordinarily prefer a beer, but it's it's not bad. Yeah, um, it's definitely a beer that's uh, better served like cold, like like put it on ice for a few hours type of cold. Um, yeah, it's refreshing. It's, um, yeah, it's not a real heavy beer by any means, which I wouldn't expect a heavy beer out of a lager. Sure. I'd expect a, a nice drink. It's not a stout. You, right. Right. Where you can like hang out with it for a while. So as it warms up, it unlocks like more nice flavors and smells. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the type of beer that I could see myself having after, like, cutting the grass. Right, yeah. On a hot yeah. day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it's cold here, and it, it hits nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot colder out there than it is here in Cincinnati. It's a good after-work beer. Like, mm. up here to, like kind of get the taste of work out of your mouth just to sort of settle into the evening it's like yep i'm not at work anymore drink a beer um, yep yeah apparently it won some gold medal well i mean they they seem to be displaying a gold medal here i don't know what the uh gold medal is for it probably says here Classic awards of sweet malt and dry hop flavors, proudly waving the flag for Cleveland and refreshing beer drinkers everywhere since 1988. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Great Lakes, Cleveland, Cleveland for people who didn't know. 
Um, and yeah, it was really hard to find any um, Cincinnati area beers uh, around here. Like the closest I could get was was Cleveland. Yeah, we used to have a a we used to have quite a few large production breweries, mostly just really shit beer. Sure. Um, like we had this, and I don't know if you've ever had it or how common it is outside of the region, but uh, we had this brewery, uh, Wiedemann, Wiedemann's beer. Oh man, it was awful. I don't, yeah, I don't think. It was like, imagine a bunch of dads in the 80s sitting around in really short jean shorts drinking really bad beer. Like that's what that beer tasted like. Mm. Sad. That's very sad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, now we I mean, Cincinnati's a lot like a, a lot of other places and it's 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 got quite a large brewery scene at this point. Um, you know. I was reading somewhere a couple of years ago, and I don't know how true this still is, but it, the article that I read at the time said that Cincinnati had the most breweries of any city per capita in the country. I don't know if that's still true. I mean, it's it's probably been four or five years. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember, what was that, three years ago when I went out there? Yeah, yeah, that, that would have been about 2017 or so. Yeah, yeah, because it was right after the election, but not right, right after. It was like the right. next spring. Yeah. Um. And yeah, there were a lot of like, like even in like the gas stations, there was a lot of craft beer options. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. And and not just in Cincinnati, but like. Um, across the river in Kentucky. Yeah, northern Kentucky. Uh, you yeah. guys, I, if I remember correctly, you were staying in the Newport area. And uh, uh, it was either in well, Newport or adjacent to Newport. It but, was, yeah, uh, Cincinnati, northern Kentucky. There's a lot of breweries in yeah, that area. Yeah, it was like right across the river by a, it was by a Dunkin' Donuts. I know that doesn't matter yeah. out that home. No, it doesn't. I like I know where you guys were staying. I just don't know where the boundaries are for northern Kentucky sure, city sure. areas. And I'm I don't really know. Like, um is there a lot of like difference between the northern Kentucky um suburbs or are they pretty much just like Yep, this you is mean, a suburb, this is a suburb. As compared to each other, like one. Yeah, one. yeah. Like, would you say there's like a kind of like, oh, you know, you're in. I mean, I imagine that every city has that sort of sense that specific suburbs are one of a multitude of stereotypes, right? But, you know, as somebody in Cincinnati looking across the river at northern Kentucky, no, nah, man, most of the suburbs are the same as Cincinnati suburbs. Um, sure, there are some that, some areas that are wealthier, some areas areas that are poor, um, but by and large, nah, I mean it all just sort of bleeds together. All right, right on. That was a Cincinnati was a good stop on that trip. Like, yeah, Cincinnati's a weird, really nice. Cincinnati's like it. It's a weird interesting small metropolitan area like I it's it's it. a it's a big small city yeah yeah it it struck me a lot as like there's like a Minneapolis but on a smaller scale and with a little bit of twang yeah, yeah. I've never been to Minneapolis, but like I could totally see where you would get that idea just based on what I know of Minneapolis. 
I um, mean, like if I like saw there's a lot of down the street. Inter- in yeah, sorry. If I saw you walking down the street in Minneapolis, I'd be like, nope. Bearded white guy with baseball cap. Nope. Yeah. Right. It's one of a million other guys. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry I interrupted um, you. Like, there's a lot of uh, cultural stuff in Cincinnati. I mean, there's, there's cultural stuff in most cities, except for Topeka. Fuck Topeka. If you got anybody who's watching your, your channel from Topeka, I will fight them. My guest's views do not represent the views of Andy Drink Beer <laughs> or Andy Gets Gas or any <laughs> subsidiaries. Um, Merit, Merit Brothers Productions will not be held liable for any actions taken based on the viewpoints of our guests. Nah, man. I, like, I've only been to Topeka once, but it was enough. They got barbecue, though. Yeah, yeah, but they don't have Skyline. I mean, I'm going to take barbecue over Skyline any day of the week. I think you froze. Though. Depends on the barbecue. Okay, the last thing I heard you say was depends on the barbecue. Yeah, it depends on the barbecue. Like, North Carolina barbecue, that, that's the best. In my opinion, I'm not. I'm not trying to start an actual fight with people who don't I, live in Topeka. Like, I'm not going to argue because I've never been to Carolina. I've never been to Memphis. I can talk about Kansas City a little bit and St. Louis a little bit, but Kansas City is fucking fire. Like, it's I've so been... sweet. I haven't been – Kansas City was my number two. Like, I really enjoyed Kansas City, but – I want to try it, Carolina. Like, it, if you put me in front of a table – oh, man, so good. It's whole hog. I might have frozen How can up you again not here. No, you froze up like a minute ago. Okay, I just got a notification saying my internet connection was unstable. Yeah, well, same. <laughs> You're unstable. We're all unstable. We're all mad here. Yeah, like North Carolina barbecue, man. If you ever get an opportunity to go there and have barbecue, take it. Oh, yeah. Like, that's that's the reason I go there. Like, yeah, it's good. Uh, same reason I'd go to Memphis or Austin. Like, I'm not going to Austin for fucking South by Southwest. I'm going there to eat brisket. Right. Like, I've never been to Texas. I was supposed to go to Texas this past April uh, for the Moto uh, GP uh, race that they had going on there. But with COVID and everything, that, that got blown out of the water. But um, hopefully in, in a year or two, yeah, I'll, I'll be able to make it down there. I'd, I'd love to go see a Moto GP race, but – uh, definitely when I get to Austin, like one of the first things I'm going to want to do is, is try some Texas barbecue. Oh yeah. And it, My it brain. seems like Texas is like almost a dry Kansas city style. Like, well, cause like that's there's what I've heard. so many ways to, to throw meat over smoke. Right. So right. it's like, it comes down to the sauce and the rub and the type of wood, and that's that's kind of it, right? Right, and like the thing that I've always heard about Texas is that it's uh, true, and I don't know anything about food or barbecue really, mm-hmm. um, but I've I've always heard it's a dry rub. I I think that I'm saying that right, In but Texas, yeah, yeah, um, and I I don't honestly know that I've ever had that. I'd like to try it. Oh, I mean, people from Texas, no matter where you meet them, they're always excited to tell you they're from Texas. Um, so, like, maybe their food's actually decent. I don't know, but I'll try it. I mean, like, I've had Texas-style stuff, but, like, not in Texas. So, I don't know how. Yeah, but, like, I've had Mexican-style stuff. 
but I wouldn't hold that up against Mexican food, right? Like I've been to Taco Bell. I, <laughs> right. I know what like it's like I, in I, I've been to Taco Bell. I basically live in Guadalajara, right? Right. Like I like I don't I've never had authentic Mexican food from Mexico. So I like I can't tell you how one compares to the other. Right. Other than I know I can get Taco Bell at one AM. Right. And it's not bad. I've certainly put worse things in my mouth. Yeah, right? That's a damn good point. Here at Andy Drink Beer and Andy Gets Gas, we are fully in support of filling your stomach with whatever, you know, bits and sides. Sobers you up a bit. (laughs) Huh? Oh, whatever that? sobers you up a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's definitely a crucial uh, a crucial element. Uh, Sorry if you're picking up neighborhood kids on my mic here. I was going to ask you earlier, like, is your kid getting murdered? But Not that I'm aware of, but I, like, I came outside specifically because the kids wouldn't stop arguing, so... Oh, like, okay, fair enough. But now the neighborhood kids down the sh- down the street are giving it hell. Yeah, and well, running around screaming. You know, uh, I'm not bothered by it. But yeah, right. Like, like I don't know. If, I don't know how much you can pick it up on the mic here. Here and there, but it's not a. Don't worry about the production value of the show. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Not not my show. Not my show for much longer. No, I'm just kidding. They're gonna cancel See you suckers. me. <laughs> no, they can't cancel me. The nice thing about but Yeah, dude, like so Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say like speaking of can't get cancelled, um like I've been uh this past week, I got a wild hair up my ass and decided I was just going to get an FCC license to be a ham radio operator. Right on. So, like, just on a whim, I took a practice test and passed it with having never looked at the material. So I'm like, oh, all right, cool. Well, I guess I'm going to do that. So I've got a uh, an exam this coming Monday. So what, like five days, something like that. Sure. In person? Can't or? cancel me now. Can't cancel me now. I got a ham radio license. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> radio free Cincinnati. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. But yeah, and like... Send in codes like they were back in World War II. Morse code. Do, 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 do. Like... And the weather in Dublin is sunny. <laughs> it's not the, uh, what is it, the shipping news or whatever? The BBC shipping report or whatever it's called? Oh, um, yeah, I can't think of it right now. That sounds close. Or yeah, right. Either. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. fucking matter. I love that shit, though, just like. Dude, it's soothing to fall asleep to. Maybe I'm just a weirdo. No, I don't know. We're all weirdos. Yeah. That's true. But yeah, uh, so like what's the brewery scene like out there? Uh well pre COVID. Um, oversaturated I guess is the word I would use Um, and like it's a city of half a million people and then a quarter million people live right next door in St. Paul and the metro area is 4.5 million and it's still like so many um small breweries but like they're all putting out the same like 
four beers. Six beers. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, what I've seen a lot of um, whenever I've been at the liquor store is people just buying cases of hams or bush. Bush light. Hams and bush light. Ugh. It's cheap. And I'm not honestly, a fan. You know, like, I know it's cheap. Hams is hams is my go-to. Um, because bush light, it's like too watery. Hams is like that. It is that like line. Bush light is like drinking the pee of an Austrian who is a bit hungover. If it was watered down, yeah. <laughs> right. If it was then further watered down. It's, well, I mean, it's it's not like drinking pee though, because like, no, like it's not like it doesn't have like a urine flavor. taste, obviously, but just I mean, like, right? It it tastes <laughs> okay. Like so it's like drinking water. It's, it's like it's, drinking a uh, yeah. Never mind. Bush Light was White Claw original. Was it? I don't even know. No, no, like, that's just a joke. Okay. I was going to say, because that doesn't seem right to me. Because, like, it's like, you know, White Claw doesn't, like, taste like anything. Like, or it'll be, like, you know, hint of a hint of lime. Right. Like, what if you just took out that flavor, and that's what Bush Light is? Yeah. Yeah, the only time I've had White Claw is when I was out camping once and these dudes set up shop next to me. It was like six guys and they're 19 kids. And they were being loud as hell mm -hmm. until about 2 a.m. when one of them came stumbling into my camp, bumped into my tent, and offered me a White Claw. I'm like, all right. Sure, I'll drink that. I'm still awake because you and your kids are being loud as shit. Oh, Eric, you never accept gifts from the Fae. <laughs> I was by myself. I was afraid not to. You're their new best friend. I mean, they were nice guys. Yeah, like they were like they were yeah. up in the morning making breakfast and like being cheerful and shit when they oh, had no okay. reason to be. Okay. But like, well, that's it tight. Was, yeah, it was a bit obnoxious at two a.m. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. How how are you still able to function on four hours of sleep? Yeah, but, but now I'm a dad, so like I get it. Hey, someone's driving down my street honking the horn. I'll let you know they're there. Yeah, it's safety. Yeah, that's that. That's that Midwest nice shit. <laughs> like, I'm here, yeah, everyone. Being, Watch out. Being Midwest nice. Midwest nice. Uh, you got kids, get them inside. <laughs> oh, man. So you were telling me earlier, Wait. it's what, like 70 there? Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is right now, but it was warm earlier. It, like, I'm sitting outside in a t-shirt. Okay. Um, it yeah, looks like it's about 66 right now. Damn. It looks pretty clear. Not gonna rain. Sorry, I'm using my phone to light up my face a little bit, so I'm sure that that looks a bit odd on you. No, you're fine. Look like a troll. I'm just playing. We're all trolls. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, it's know, nothing important. Day. I'm sure. It snowed last. Yeah. Day. How much snow did you guys get? Uh, I think the final count was something like six inches, but um. Like, it started melting last night. Oh, really? Right. 
like the drive home from work yesterday was a little uh, shady. But uh, going to work this morning, I don't know. Everyone forgot how to zipper merge. That's it. Like, that was the only problem I had is, like, trying to get from 94 onto 394. And, like, one guy was like, I'm going to drive on your left parallel with you. It's like, no, dude, that's not how this works. And then it's like a double zip zipper merge that you have to mm. do, like one and then another one. And right. this other dude was like, oh, no, I don't want to I don't want to merge left right now, even though you're right behind me. So now we have to disrupt the whole fucking thing, like putting two cars into one space. Oh, that sounds on, awful. I don't get it. Like, it happens every year. Like, yeah, like okay, so the- in Cincinnati, I pr- we probably didn't get six or eight inches of snow total all of last winter. But, like, in Minneapolis, you guys are used to getting that over the course of a day or a weekend or whatever. So yeah. I would think that the people in your area would be better prepared. Yeah, I don't it. Yeah, I don't really understand why and it wasn't even bad. Like conditions weren't bad this morning. Like roads were pretty clear. Like we should be going. Man. Yeah. The last time we met up out in Chicago, mm-hmm. when that snowstorm crept up out of nowhere and I had to ride my motorcycle back to Cincinnati, dude, I was convinced I was going to die like three different times. That was awful. Yeah, I remember like we were all back at the house <clears throat> and uh, like, <laughs> taking bets getting- on how, how far <laughs> Eric can make it. I think you called and uh, Anne talked to you for a while, and uh, yeah, and she gets off the phone. And she's like, "So this is what's going on," and immediately we were just like, "Can we, like, is it possible for somebody to drive out to Indiana, pick up Eric, and then keep driving him to fucking Cincinnati, and then come back?" And then do whatever they were gonna do. Like, yeah, because like or like crowdfunding an Uber, I think was a, a suggestion. Yeah, and like at, at at one point, I was on my phone looking for like a moving truck that I could rent mm-hmm. for like twelve hours just to get back to Cincinnati with my motorcycle. Right. I ended up riding it to, uh, just outside of Indy where my sister lives right and then leaving my bike there for a couple weeks and she drove me back but dude that was fucking hairy that was nasty drive nasty ride yeah well and like even driving out like after you got things like kind of figured out what what your steps were gonna be i remember uh the minneapolis contingent uh, heading out like maybe 15 minutes after that and downtown like the interstate going through Chicago because we had to like go all the way through Chicago and shut down just like we were lucky to get up to 20 yeah like there were points where I was I mean once I got on the highway I probably wasn't doing less than 50 just for my own safety, right? Because right. other cars, you know. But I like there was at one point an SUV trying to merge right into my lane, mm-hmm. and you, like on a motorcycle, you can't just hit the brakes in the snow. Like you're going down. Right. The best you can do is slowly let off the throttle. Sure. <laughs> so, like, I was standing up on my pegs leaning over my front front tire to keep traction the best i could and my back tire was just spinning left and 
like fishtailing left and right. Not like enough to spin me around, but like I was trying to use my legs to stabilize my my rear tire through the right. pegs. Not not enough to spin you around, but that thought was in your mind. Oh yeah, like even if it's only moving six inches left and right, those six inches feel massive. Hey, six inches is a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Six average. inches is perfectly normal. Mm-hmm. I mean, but yeah. yeah it, you don't it, want any sort of unpredictable movement there. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like I made it alive. Dude, my finger was purple for like two days after I got back to Cincinnati. Yeah. Just from just from like being wet and cold for like eight hours. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. That'll like it, uh that shouldn't that, that shouldn't it'll go ahead. Oh yeah, dude. It was it was bad. Like I was wearing all the uh, wet weather gear that I had, but after a certain point like it's just it's saturated you're getting wet yeah and once you're and wet didn't and have... cold it's like that's just wet. A fucking, once you're wet and cold like yeah okay now it's a race against the clock well and not only are you wet and cold but you're wet and cold fully exposed in a 60 mile an hour wind right <laughs> like it, yeah it for like an hour just to like go to the bathroom and try to run my hands under some room temperature water right yeah that was always something we learned in like um i was in the scouts not bragging it's just what it was um but yeah it was like if your fingers freeze don't run them over or don't run warm water over them run yeah. cold water over them it's just like but warm <laughs> yeah i mean but e- like even still when when your fingers are that cold mm-hmm. room temperature water like it's almost unbearably hot Right. Yeah, like, as anything. you start to regain, regain sensation in your fingers, mm-hmm. oh, there, there's, yeah, nah, just don't, just don't get that cold is the solution. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, if it's really cold, try to stay dry. Yeah. If you can't stay dry, try to warm up. That's yeah. That's I mean, living in the upper, upper Midwest, winters are going to be bad. Like, oh, yeah. I can't imagine not having shelter in an upper Midwest winter. Yeah, I. It's bad. Or anywhere, for that matter long term well like we all know like there's enough houses for everyone oh yeah it's a fact we all know this and there's what like five or six times the number of vacant housing units whether that be an apartment or an actual house yeah yeah uh like I think there's eight empty investor owned houses. So landlords houses, eight houses for every homeless person in the United States. And like That's obscene. Why? What, what the, if you can't rent it, you're not going to make money. Yeah, no, it's absolute bullshit, dude. The fact that two people or one person can own two homes when there's a person that doesn't have one is obscene. Yeah, I don't get that. Like, 
everyone gets first before anyone goes back for seconds, right? Right. If someone came to the 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 barbecue, the cookout late, they get a plate made for them, right? Yeah, like if there's like if they don't jump to the front of the line, it's because there's still tons of food for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, you don't take seconds till everyone's had first. Exactly. And it's fucking ridiculous when you hear about people like, oh, yeah, they had to file for bankruptcy and they lost their fourth house or their eighth house. It's like, what about all the other ones? I thought these guys were broke. Yeah. Like, dude, if you have two houses or more, you should have your houses taken away and you should be allowed to rent a room in one of them. Yeah. And of course we're not including like cabins or hunting shacks or Yeah, no, like an actual living domicile. Right. Like it's one thing to have a house and then a place out by a lake where you go ice fishing or a spot where you can heat up in the event that you're going out hunting. Like, I don't consider those the same thing, but like if you've got a bed there and a refrigerator and utilities, like somebody could live there. Right. Okay. So I was with you until the utilities. Like, I don't know what the threshold is. I'm just sort of speaking off the cuff here. So, my family's got a cabin up north, and we have a break. We have beds and a refrigerator and electricity. You have plumbing? Nope. We got a do hole have, in the ground. You should have a hole in the ground. Do you have municipal water provided to oh, that, No, uh, we buy our water at the gas station. Right. So I would say right there that you're sort of like – okay right because to me everybody deserves housing which includes access to clean running water Mm -hmm. and indoor plumbing or you know even if it's a detached like an outhouse or whatever clean facilities whatever those may be ours so that automatically rules out both of your houses yeah (laughs) <laughs> I'm safe. So you're fine. You're basically homeless. Yeah. I mean, I have more in common with a homeless person, with any random homeless person, than I do have any with, billionaire. With any white man wearing a suit. Yeah, I'll say it. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover, but like every time I see a white man in a suit, I'm like, mm, I don't need <laughs> to read that book. I'm not buying that book. Yeah. <laughs> I see a white guy in a suit and I'm like, fuck that guy. <laughs> what a douche. Like I've had to wear suits for work before, but I didn't last very long at those jobs. How much of a traitor did you feel like? Like Dude, a, like I, I just son of a bitch. It wasn't that I felt like a traitor because I was still who I was. I was just wearing a suit, right? But like, like I didn't like fire anybody. I wasn't making decisions that were wrecking people's lives. Uh, I was just filling a role. And that role required that I wear a suit. But I still felt like an, a piece of shit. You know who else claimed they were just filling a role? Who? Who, Andy? I don't want to say. Okay. I'm not going to compare you to the Nazis. I, well, I guess I appreciate that. Oh, that's why you wanted the Dortmunder gold, right? What does Dortmunder mean, Eric? Well, I'm pretty sure Dortmund is a city in Germany. Hmm. 
you know, an awful lot about Germany. Of, of, of the city. From <laughs> you know, I've been to Germany. I took years of German oh. lessons. Oh, interesting. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Is your grandpa Argentinian by any chance? No, he, but he was born in Germany. Jesus Christ. All right, that's been Andy Drink Beer. Uh. <laughs> he had to leave, Andy. Oh, God damn it. No, like, I, so my, my, if I understand or recall the family history accurately, he and his family left in the what the 20s fuck? or the poor like from the you cut out you <laughs> cut out time, like majorly his family left I? in the eh, <laughs> no, what the fuck back. can you hear me yeah yeah you bet. okay so the family had to leave in like the 20s or 30s because they were just too damn poor like he would spend all day from sun up to sundown standing on the corner playing violin just to make enough money to get a loaf of bread basically oh mad props to the violinists out there yeah violin is a cool instrument along with the accordion underappreciated you know the difference between a violin and a fiddle um i don't to be honest with you i always assumed it was the size a violin has strings, and a fiddle has strings. All right. No, it's I the think same we're damn done. instrument. It's the same fucking instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I didn't know if there was any sort of difference between them. I always assumed if there was a difference, it was because of the size. And, you know, as a note... A note. Uh, I played percussion because I have absolutely no musical talent outside of rhythm. Yeah, percussionist. What? <laughs> I'll try to do a video uh, soon of uh, me with my drum set up at the cabin. Oh, she, I didn't realize you had a drum set. Yeah, yeah. At but at the cabin. You're gonna show up at. The, you're gonna show up at the cabin one day, and I'm just gonna be in there tapping out some sick beats <laughs> there's a bass too but it's missing the uh wait like a kick bass no like on a bass the floor guitar. i mean there's oh, a okay. there's a bass drum too okay the, so the drum set is if you have time yeah um got the snare got the hi-hat uh Got a tom, bass drum, uh, floor tom, and I think a ride and a crash cymbal. That's perfectly fine. And wind chimes. Oh. And a cowbell. Well, I mean, uh, I would. And there's have a bass guitar that. that's missing the uh, E string. I think e. I don't know what that is. I don't know what an E it, string it, is. It's the big string. The big one. Okay. So yeah, oh, wait, is that the top is that, one? As you, okay, I was gonna say as you're playing it, is that the top one or the bottom mm -hmm. one? Yeah, it goes big, kind of big, not that big, and small. Smallish. Yeah, unless you're playing five string, which I don't know. Are you in corn? I mean, I'm in Ohio, so I'm very adjacent yeah, yeah. to corn. We're all we're all corn adjacent here. I've done videos with people from Rapid City and now Cincinnati. We're all in Minneapolis. We're all corn adjacent. Like you can drive ten minutes and be in corn. It's amazing how many things are made out of corn. Oh, isn't corn? Dude, where's great? the corn museum? Is that in Iowa? Corn is great. I don't know about the Corn Museum. Uh, there's a Corn Palace in Mitchell, South Dakota. That's what I'm thinking of. 
I went to it during the off season. Not very impressive. No corn. That's on disappointing. Or anything. That's disappointing. As a Midwestern individual, I have always thought, "Hey, one day <laughs> I'm going to the Corn Palace." I mean, I. It was interesting to see, even without all the corn on it, um, because it makes you realize, like, oh. They remake this entire thing with a different aesthetic every year. Oh, I didn't realize that they did that. I just assumed that they put like a coat of shellac over the corner oh. on the outside of the building. No, like after they display it for whatever it is, the two weeks or month or whatever, they take all the corn off. So it's like the Renaissance, Festi- uh, Renaissance Festival equivalent of corn structures. I suppose so. Have you never... You're, you're, have you never been to the Renaissance Festival? I have never been to the Renaissance Festival. There is one here, too. Or not here, but Dude. like here-ish. Dude. I... It's so expensive. Yeah, it's bullshit. And it's horrible in its own way, but it's also fantastic in its own way. I mean, we have the state fair if I want to waste that much money, though. I've only ever been to... Actually, I don't think I've ever been to a state fair. I've been to county I, fairs. I think that's a big... Like, so, Renaissance Fest is, like, a pretty big deal here. I guess. With, like... How do I say this without sounding offensive? Nerds? Dorks? That crowd... Right. But, like, the state fair is our... It's a Midwestern it, staple. It is. How, how do you know if you're from the Midwest? Well, is the state fair the biggest fucking thing in the world? Like, for 10 like, days a year, the state fairgrounds becomes the third biggest city in Minnesota. So... Yeah, it's a big deal. You can get your fried. I mean, fruit. it's a, it's a big deal here in Ohio. I've just never been. Like I've, I've been to the county fair. Two, two counties away. Okay. But I've never even been to the Hamilton County Fair where Cincinnati is, and the Ham like I can drive five minutes and see the Hamilton County Fairgrounds. Huh. I don't even know if there's like a Hennepin County Fair. You're free. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Sorry, it just froze up for a second. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, honestly, I prefer the county fair to the state fair. Really? As far as fairs go. Because you're getting basically the same food. Like your mini donuts, your cheese curd. I don't know if you guys have cheese curds. Um, I don't know if we have them at the fairs because I don't go, but um, I have had cheese curds here, yes. You sounded so like. I didn't because mean I to be dis- go. Like, okay. No, I was just reiterating what we had already established. No, I, w- I wasn't trying to be like, right. uh, plebeians go to the, the county fair. No. The filthy working class. No, the county fair is a bomb because it's like, hey, you want to see a giant squash? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of do. Yeah, absolutely. Also, Show me to your giant squash, good sir. They don't have the like uh, status of the state fair, so they also don't have the price tag. But you're getting the same food, your corn dogs and your mini donuts. With, with the funnel, funnel, funnel fries funnel or what? Funnel cake, funnel that's cake. what it is. Yeah, funnel cake is like one of my all-time favorite things. And I know it's just fried batter with sugar yeah. on it. Like it's so good. So uh, when Sarah, my wife and I started dating, mm-hmm. I'd never had them. I'd never ever had funnel cake. 
<laughs> and we went somewhere. I don't remember where it was. It might have been Renaissance, Renaissance Festival. Ren Fair or whatever you call it out there. It might have been there. Ren Fest. So we went there. Ren Fest. Yeah, Ren Fest. Sorry. Stop that. <laughs> so we, we went somewhere and she's like, oh, man, I kind of want a funnel cake. I'm like, you want a what? Yes. So she starts explaining what a funnel cake is to me. And I'm like, oh, right. sounds awful. And so I'm like, fine, let's, let's get one. I'll, I'll try it. It was all right. Like, but it wasn't, I, I didn't understand why a funnel cake was apparently so very important to such a large number of people. I mean, I don't know how to explain it better than like imagine pancake batter dripped into hot oil and then when it's cooked you get a bunch of powdered sugar on top or cinnamon sugar they do these cinnamon sugar funnel cakes sometimes mm -hmm. So bomb. I haven't had it with it's, the cinnamon sugar. I've I've had it with powdered sugar. Yeah, yeah, that's the like. Is that the the traditional funnel cake of the yeah, Midwest? That's, that's the traditional funnel cake. No, funnel cakes are bomb. I mean, like it's so good. I don't know. Somebody had like a bunch of extra you batter know, one day. I I often wonder that, like. Who was the first sad bastard who came up with this idea? And I'm not specifically referring to funnel cakes here, but like just food in general. Like Skyline, for example, is a good example. Who's the first oh, yeah, yeah. sad bastard to have tried this combination of food and been like, you know what? This could, this could be a thing. Like, like potatoes. Who pulled a potato out of the ground and was like, I want to eat this fucking thing? Incans. They're delicious. That may actually be true. That but true. though they're delicious, <laughs> they don't look appetizing. Far less appetizing in appearance are mushrooms. I love mushrooms. You know, mushrooms are so close to humans genetically that people can have allergic reactions based on that. Based on what? On how close the mushroom is genetically to that person. Really? Like, uh, kind of like a body rejecting an organ. Really? Like, yeah, we recognize that this is humanoid, but no, not for you. Huh. Yeah, yeah. no, I didn't. I had never heard that before. Um, I mean, mushrooms are fucking gross. Like, they taste delicious. All right, but they and look that hideous. is the end of... Shut up. You're done. You do not come on my channel at just besmirch mushrooms you can talk about anything you want other than that how dare you how dare you sir you froze up like a million different times all in like horrible posts. <laughs> man i'm glad there's no editing on this show yeah that's awesome i'm, I'm pleased about that no fuck you fuck you with your mushroom hating bullshit you will never be on this show again. Like, mushrooms look hideous. They taste good, but they look fucking hideous. And fungus in general is ab abhorrent to me. Oh, and raw mushrooms are gross, too. I believe you, because I would never eat a raw mushroom. <laughs> you gotta cook that poison out. Yeah, fuck <laughs> mushrooms. Like, they taste good, but fuck mushrooms, man. Yeah, not all of them taste good, though. Again, I believe you. Like the 
never mind. We'll talk about it when we're not recording. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us for another episode of Andy Drink Beer. Um, with me today was Eric. Eric's great. Check out Eric. Uh, you got anything to plug? Um, sorry, I almost went in a dirty direction with that. Um, <laughs> n- nothing especially. <laughs> nothing specific though i would tell people uh with what something like 13 days now before the election if uh if you are relying on your vote to be the solution to a problem you're wasting your time if you want to vote that's fine but if all you do is vote i don't want to hear you bitching yeah Endorse Eric for president 2020. Yeah, Eric forever, not just 2020. I'd rather vote for Kanye West than Joe Biden. Yeah, no, like I'm not voting for Joe Biden. I'm not voting for Trump or Joe Biden. No. I would vote for Kanye West at this point just because it's hilarious. You know, there's there's people out there like anyone but Trump, but I'm like anyone but Trump or Biden. <laughs> right. Got the best shot. Just give me something. Yeah, like honestly, I haven't seen a single person running for election who I'm like, that person is good and stands a chance mm-hmm. ever in my entire life. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not like the election wasn't decided all. Yeah, I mean, you're either going to have one business candidate or a different business candidate. Well, yeah, and like, I mean, as we've seen, even if the popular vote fails, the Electoral College overrides it. Yeah, what you want doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, exactly. And that's the way it's structured. But anyway, uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, if you like what you've seen here today, uh, um, bad for you. <laughs> like, subscribe, share. Uh, I love you all. Thanks, Eric, for coming out today. Thanks for having me. It's been great. Bye.